Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this tutorial, we'll go over a two-point perspective drawing using Sketchbook Pro and our Wacom tablet. And this is probably the most used type of perspective for any three-dimensional sketch. This might be because it shows very accurately how we observe the world around us. Small and big objects can be drawn using this perspective and they'll look very realistic. And for this tutorial, again, using the perspective grid from Sketchbook Pro is very easy and intuitive. And just as in one point perspective, we argue that horizontal and vertical lines stay that way. In two point perspective, only the vertical lines are maintained as vertical. The rest of the lines are deformed by the two vanishing points on the picture. So for this exercise, I'll do arrangement of cubic elements, uh, still working with cubes before moving to something else. And when working with any perspective, I strongly suggest you make a previous sketch, a rapid sketch of what you want to draw, just to be aware of the proportions of your elements and the general dimensions of your composition. It's better to have this since the beginning instead of working your way through only to find that in the end, your drawing has a very different proportion to what you wanted. So if you want to follow this exercise as it is, in an initial layer, play with the lines to create some cubic elements, stack them on top of each other, and when you're happy with it, add a new layer where you're going to make the right sketch, this time with the final line weights.
Now to add some tones and colors to the picture, I'll play with a grayscale, starting with clear gray color that is going to be on the right faces of the elements. In a new layer, I'll select the area using the Select Polyline tool and then cover that area with the color I want uh, using the paint bucket. Then I'll repeat the process for the rest of the faces with some darker gray tones on each one. So the lightest gray tone will go on the right side, the medium tones on the top, and the darker grays will go on the left side. Good, now for the color faces, the process is exactly the same, and in this case I want the right faces to have a light cream tone, followed by a medium one on top and a darker one on the left. And you'll see the tones will look very yellowish in the first pass, but don't worry, if you're not convinced of that color, you can always change it later on.
You can position yourself in the layer you want to change the tone, then lock it, change the color from the color puck, use your pen, set it to its maximum size, and then simply paint all over the canvas. Since the layer is locked, it will only paint the areas that have been previously painted. Finally, we need to add some background color and shadows to the elements to give them more volume as well as on the floor. And for this, we can once again use different layers and our airbrush set to black color with some opacity to give the idea of shadow on the surfaces. And there you have it. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you want to try it out yourself, you can play with different colors, geometries, intensity of shadows. You can separate the elements. They don't need to be stacked on top of each other. However, do remember it's convenient to always start with an initial rapid sketch. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.